I'm Dr. Linda Kromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Today we're going to be looking at a question of the week, and this question pertains to bleeding and painful sex in a trans man. So this is a 25-year-old transgender male who was complaining of bleeding and pain with sex. Now this individual had been on testosterone treatment for two years and was no longer having periods. He was very careful about using testosterone regularly and no doses had been missed. So bleeding was not an issue of a low testosterone dose or having missed doses. He was also in a monogamous relationship with a cis male and the sexual relationship involved penetration. Bleeding was not severe, but it occurred frequently with front penetration, which was also uncomfortable for this individual. As a doctor, I want to make sure of a few important matters. First of all, when I hear about bleeding and painful sex, I want to know is the sexual activity voluntary? That is, nobody's getting hurt here, right? So that was the first thing that I ascertained and the patient said, yes, this was completely voluntary and wanted. Secondly, could the bleeding be related to a pregnancy or an ectopic pregnancy occurring in the tube instead of in the uterus? Now, in this case, the individual is using a reliable contraceptive, in this case Nexplanon, which is an implantable rod containing progesterone in his arm. But nonetheless, we do want to keep this in mind. Under the influence of testosterone, vaginal tissues will change. The tissue becomes drier and less pliable, and it's easier to injure or tear. This is very similar to what happens in women in menopause. With a lack of estrogen, the tissue becomes thinner and more delicate. They call it atrophic. And this slide will show you the difference between cells that are premenopause, or that is to say, under the influence of estrogen primarily. And then secondly, on the right, you can see the cells that are much, um, much smaller and they're, they're not the same. They are much more easily injured in somebody who is either menopausal or under the dominant influence of testosterone. By the way, it's also common for trans men and menopausal women to have unsatisfactory pap tests because of the thinning of this tissue and its change in character. So how do we help? Well, first of all, recommend a lubricant. Now, of all the sources that are out there, I think that Babeland, babeland.com, is a good resource. They have also uh, brick and mortar stores as well, but they have a wide assortment of lubricants that are available to people. And remember that minimizing micro trauma to the vagina is important in reducing the spread of STIs, particularly HIV. Now, in the middle of this picture, you can see a product called tea oil from Buck Angel. You can look that one up. The second thing that can be done is to try topical estrogen. Now this is available by prescription only. One can try an estrogen cream by applying it at the opening. Sometimes I'll say apply a pea-sized amount at the vaginal opening. It can also be prescribed as an estradiol ring that goes deep in the vagina, something like a diaphragm would, or an estradiol tablet that is inserted twice a week after initial once a day week. Back to the provider, though, of course, for this patient if the issue doesn't resolve. Now, although this couple was protected because my patient was using a Nexplanon, I always want to remind people that trans men can be at risk for an unplanned pregnancy. Planned Parenthood can be an excellent resource for the placement of IUDs, for progesterone implants in the arm, and non-estrogen containing birth control pills. So I hope that all of this information is useful to you today. If it is, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Transgender Medicine Made Simple. And if you have a question that you'd like to have entertained as the question of the week, please make note of it in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.